morning. Great to have you on the show. Just help us understand, you know, we were just chatting with the management of DLF as well and I'm sure you got a piece of that conversation. How's business shaping up for you at your end? Hello, very good morning and happy new year to all of you guys. A bit late, but nevertheless, um, it's definitely a good and a happy new year. Um, so it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, the numbers have stacked up well for the last quarter for us. Um, we grew by, our pre-sales grew by about 56% to 1,241 crores. And the best part was the collections, uh, which almost are close to 1,000 crores in the last quarter of year at 941 crores. Uh, and for the three uh, quarters together, nine months, uh, we were almost close to 4,000 crores versus 2,100 crores last year, 89% growth. So yeah, we're pretty happy with what's happening. And I think uh, looking forward to the launches coming up in the coming quarter. Give us a sense of what exactly is planned. You know, we were just chatting with Mr. Ashok Tyagi that uh, the Mumbai players are moving to New Delhi and the New Delhi ones are coming to Mumbai. How are you looking at diversifying and what's the project pipeline like? Uh, look, uh, our presence currently is very significant in the south of India, uh, but we have expanded our presence already in the west. We are increasingly doing acquisitions in the western region between Mumbai and Pune. Um, I think next year will be an um, inflection year for us in the western region. Uh, we will see more launches coming in there. And our thought process really currently is to look at five major cities, which is uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai and Pune, other than the other uh, five cities that we already present in. Um, so I think uh, we will continue to expand. Of course, uh, North is something which is always on the horizon. Uh, we will continue to look at uh, uh, our entry at some point in time. Um, fair enough. Uh, let's also get in a sense as then what the outlook is when it comes to uh, the foray that the company has made when it comes to redevelopment as well. Can you take us through what kind of GDV potential you're targeting? Uh, look, we've just done the first acquisition, which has got uh, 1,500 plus crores of GDV, uh, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, we have a robust pipeline of projects which we are working upon, and I think some more announcements of new acquisitions will happen in this quarter, uh, wherein uh, we're working on multiple projects across regions south and west. Redevelopment, of course, in Mumbai is going to be one of our mainstay. Um, and uh, we intend to uh, actively participate and pursue opportunities there. And I think you will see a lot more coming in next uh, two quarters there. The average price realization on year is down about 2%. Just wanted to understand, given that it has been pretty strong with the collections, the customer collections across the board, what the outlook is when it comes to the price realization down the line and trends? Uh, look, uh, this uh, uh, down of about 2% is more on the back of inventory mix. Uh, but overall, uh, average realization between each brand, which is Purvankra, Provident, and Purva Land, the general realization has gone up uh, over the last uh, eight quarters, I would say. Um, what we see is more micro-market and project-driven uh, price increases. Uh, you know, there are different markets micro markets which behave differently and demand supply situation there and of course the maturity of the project decides what kind of pricing and the price appreciation that you look at but normally from launch to completion you typically look at anywhere between 50 and 70 percent increase in price and i think that trend will continue um, as far as the real estate sector is concerned but if you look at uh, you know the overall average uh, increase in the price because this increase i'm talking about between four and five years uh, if you look at average increase, I think it will stay um, somewhere in high single digits. I would expect the industry to be at about 8 to 9%, which is pretty much uh, uh, akin to inflation plus maybe 3% or so on an average. But I think project to project, uh, micro market to micro market, you will see different increases in prices. Uh, but the good part is I think as an industry, um, developers have not gone uh, you know, over the top and increased prices uh, but they are chasing volumes. And I think that's good and healthy for both the consumers and the developing uh, community. Right. You know, the other thing I wanted to understand was um, where your net debt as of now, as we understand, stands at about 1,990-odd crore rupees, right? This was as of Q2 end, obviously. Uh, what's the debt retirement plan? Uh, look, uh, you know, uh, from our point of view, we want to keep the debt levels at similar levels. Um, but what we want to do, which we are successfully now demonstrating, is increase our business. Um, 
But if you look at another metric, uh, which is basically debt per square foot of area under development, that has dropped by more than 50% over last two and a half years, so three years time frame. I think that trend will definitely continue and we will continue to add, uh, you know, to our bottom line and uh, uh, the EBITDA numbers. But having said that, I think debt is more a factor of the volume of business you do and uh, our focus is really to increase the volume. So we would expect uh, the debt to be at similar levels because we will do a lot of acquisitions. This is pretty much all self-retiring debt uh, other than the commercial debt, which is uh, largely going into an asset creation. Uh, so natural course of the business, we will retire a lot of debt. Having said that, we will continue to acquire and therefore the cycle continues and focus really will be to ensure that we don't compromise growth for, uh, for the uh, debt or any other business. We have a healthy balance between debt and the business that we are doing. I know you just touched upon growing off EBITDA. Any projections in mind or any targets that you have in mind? Look, our goal is really uh, to stay with the 30% target, uh, EBITDA target, uh, and continue to sustain that um, on an average. Now, this this varies between Provident, Purvankara, and Purvaland. Uh, I would expect us to maintain that, uh, given that uh, you know construction costs, land costs, etc., uh, etc., et approval cost. Uh, so I think we will definitely maintain a 30% healthy margin as far as the EBITDA numbers are concerned. Uh, appreciate your time. Thank you for giving us a lot more clarity on Purvankara's business and what the road ahead looks like.